I was lucky enough to spend a week up close and personal with the best players in the world at the Open Championship. I was mingling with the likes of Rory, with Rom, and with Gareth Bale. But I learned some amazing things watching these guys hit balls and a lot of information which can help you with your own game. I've teamed up with Hackmotion to explain how to translate the professional moves into something you can use, and I'm very excited about it. If you want more information on Hackmotion, it's a fantastic device which allows you to monitor wrist movement, club rotation, and all manner of amazing things through impact. You can check out the description below. We have a link. You can find out more information there. So the world's best golfers are obviously unbelievable at hitting the golf ball, and they all manage it in very different ways. However, I was struck by how they all seem to make one move and get into one position pretty much universally to help them hit the ball further and with more consistency. And this is something which you can have in your own game. So for this initial look at pro swings, let's bring in John Rahm and Colin Morikawa. Now, as you can see from these videos, both Colin and John employ a position like this at the top of the swing with the lead wrist. Now, this is known as flexion, as that wrist moves into more of what you might call a bowed position. It's called flexion. This would be neutral. And the opposite way, that would be called extension. They also both have a weak left-hand position on the grip. Now, this could cause the club face to open. We will get into this a little bit more as well, because they could be using this type of movement, this flexion of the lead wrist to help strengthen the club face. Now for a comparison, let's bring in Rory McIlroy, Ricky Fowler, and Alex Noren. What a man. Now all these golfers use a neutral to maybe a slightly stronger grip. So you can see the lead hand a little bit more on top of the club, this will make the club face a little bit more neutral to slightly more closed when compared to the standard grips of a John Rahm and a Colin Morikawa. And as they reach the top of their golf swings, their wrists are in a much more neutral position. Again, probably down to the way that they grip the club. They don't need to add too much flexion and they don't need to add too much extension. They can keep that wrist angle nice and neutral. So these players, despite all being the best in the world, employ very different wrist angles at the top of the swing. And yet, as they come into impact, just check out these positions. That lead hand pointing down at the target, 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 pointing down at the target. Basically, they all get into the same impact position with the back of the hand, pointing down towards their target. So how can all these golfers, despite different grips, despite different amounts of flexion and extension within the backswing, all return to a position of impact with the back of the lead hand pointing down towards the target? And it's all about matching up the rotation of the lead arm and the lead wrist to the angle of the club face as it approaches impact. So what hack motion data shows with Tor Pros is that as they move into impact, the left arm rotates, the wrist rotates, and that squares the club face. As they come through the ball, it continues in the same manner to rotate after impact. Now this may sound a little bit strange because a lot of instruction nowadays seems to be focused on holding this wrist angle through the ball. And yet the very best players allow a continuous amount of rotation throughout the impact area. What really separates the Tor Pros from your average golfers is that they have this rotation consistently the same every single time, but that is not the absolute key. The key, 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 key whispered in the corners, is matching up the rotation to the amount of flexion and extension which goes on in the lead wrist. And this is where you can really start to transform your own game. So as mentioned, all pros have a certain amount of rotation through the ball. If you watch John Rahm, he has a lot of flexion in that lead wrist. So as he moves into impact, that angle extends, as you can see on the data here, goes from here and extends a little bit moving down into impact. But also, he allows that rotation to happen, but at a slower rate than some of the other pros out there. Now, if we have a look at Justin Thomas at the top of his swing, quite a neutral lead wrist position. 
but he adds a little bit of flexion moving down and yet again allows that forearm, that wrist to rotate through the impact area. So when you're looking at your own swing, this is where you need to understand a few of these terms, but also understand where your club face is pointing. If you have a weak grip and you have a little bit too much extension at the top of the swing, the club face is gonna sit in an open position. Now what that would mean, if you come into impact, that club face is gonna be pointing miles off to the right-hand side if you're a right-hander. You would have to employ, from this position, more flexion, in the lead wrist to help square the club face up, but also more rotation of the forearm. This is why personally, as a coach myself, but other professionals out there, prefer a club face position at the top of the swing, if at all possible, to be neutral, because it allows a little bit more consistency. But, but, as mentioned, all golfers are not the same. We can employ certain amounts of wrist movement using hack motion to actually detect this to get that club face back to square at impact. Now, a great way to practice this is a little half swing drill. And we're really gonna focus on matching lead arm, lead wrist rotation to club face angle. Now, I have the hack motion here. I have the data so I can check that, but I'm also gonna relate it to you in a way that you can practice this at the range. Having a monitor like this, it just gives that invaluable feedback. At address, I'm gonna be pointing my club down towards where I want the ball to go. There'll be a bit of extension in that lead wrist. That's absolutely normal. Now, as I take the club back, I want to allow my lead arm to rotate. So the back of my left wrist is pointing out in front of me. And what this does, it actually brings the wrist into a very neutral position. So I've got what, plus four extension here. I can get it back down a little bit more to neutral. Oh, there we go. And that allows the club face to actually match my spine angle. And you can see this left arm is rotated. As I come down into impact, I'm gonna allow that rotation, getting the club face pointing back down towards the target, and then continue to allow that rotation to happen. Now what should happen in general, as far as the data is concerned, is I'll start in a little bit of extension, bring the club face back to somewhere around neutral, have a little bit of flexion within this lead wrist, but again, try and keep it quite neutral, and then start to rotate through, and that'll put the left wrist into extension. So a few little practice swings here. Rotation, club face matching spine angle. Left wrist here for me, a little bit of flexion, that's fine. Return, a little bit of flexion, and allow that forearm to continue to rotate. Just have a few little half swings at that. Just allowing that club face to rotate through. This is a great way to actually test this for me. You can see at the top here, I was minus seven. Now that's minus three, two flexed. However, at impact, I'm actually getting into a lovely position with that left wrist before allowing it to rotate through. So this is something which I need to practice, but I can only really tell this through using the hack motion. You can use video and get an approximation, but this really allows you to dive down into the data. Using this half swing drill is a fantastic way to get used to it and to understand where that ball goes as you hit. Obviously using hat motion is fantastic. I just wanna say a huge thank you for them for partnering up with the channel for this video, but also link it in to your videos as well. So get your phone out, record your swing so you can actually see where you are at the point of impact as well.